Hello, welcome to this video, David Healy with you once again. Uh, in this video I thought we'd have a look at how to create a velocity meter so that uh, when you play a key the meter will go up and then as you release the key it'll sort of animate and slowly go back to where it was. So I've got a couple of examples here. So this is a, a velocity meter in the style of a VU meter. So if I just click here you'll see the needle go up. Let's so make sure I'm selected on the right instrument. And then it sort of goes back down with a short time delay. And another example is this instrument, which is more of your sort of LED meter style. But again, it's got that time delay on the release so the meter slowly comes down. So we'll have a look at that. One thing you can't do in contact is get the value of the actual volume output. So th this meter up here. We have no access to that in the script so you can't make a, a true VU meter that responds to volume so that's why we're making one that responds to velocity. Now the way this works is we, um, as you know, uh, the velocity range is 0 to 127 so in our script we make a slider with that same range and then when a note is played we take the velocity of that note and set the slider's value to it so that's the first stage that's how we get the needle to move up or the LED to move up then in the release callback we have a, a loop that has a, sh a short time delay in it and that's where we get the meter to come back down at whatever rate we desire and then the final step is to actually apply an image to the slider so it looks like either a VU meter or an LED bank. And let's just uh, get on with this. So I'm going to close down these instruments. I'm going to create a new one. We'll call it Velocity Meter. And because we're using images, we are going to need a resource container. So I'm going to save this to my desktop in this folder I've already created. And we'll create a resource container in there. Now I've already put some pictures and their associated text files inside the resources folder in, in here. And we'll have a look at them later on. So if I go in here, you can see there is a resources folder and there's pictures. But we'll come back to them later. So I'm just going to make the resource container here and that bundles everything up and we're ready to begin so we'll start with the usual on init we're going to create a slider call it SLI VEL for velocities it's going to have a range of 0 to 127 to match the velocity range and that's the first part done now what we need to do is go down to on uh, on note and what we want to do is set the sliders value to the note velocity. All right, that's the next part done. And finally what we need to do is bring the value of the slider back down when the note is released. So on release and we want to first of all check that no keys are held down so we put if search search is how we check an array for a value so we're going to search the key down array this is an array provided by contact and we're going to search for the value 1 because the key down array has 127 value um 127 elements one for each note and if the keys down the value will be 1, if it's not it will be 0. So if we search for the value 1 and don't find it, we'll get minus 1 and that means no keys are currently held down. So all keys have been released, then we can reset our VU meter. And then we're going to need a little loop in here, so I'm going to put 4i, oh hang on a second, we haven't declared an i variable, let's go up to the top here. There's our i variable. And there's a few different ways of doing this loop. You can do it from the current value of the VU meter down to zero, but I, I prefer to do it this way just to make sure that the, um, the slider always gets back to its original value. So 
So we're going to do um, the slider equals its current value minus one. And I've actually just thought of a, uh, what might be a better way to do this. I'm going to try something. This is how I used to do it. Uh, but I've thought of a way just now that might be better. We're going to use a while loop instead. I'm going to say while the velocity meter is greater than zero because we want it to reduce down to zero. We're going to increment our i variable and just need to put an end while in there. Now we're going to need a wait statement and this determines how quickly our animated slide is going to go back to zero. So if we start off with something like uh, 2500, that should be a good starting value. So if you like, each frame of the animation is going to take 2500 milliseconds, uh, sorry, microseconds. Okay, I'm going to hit F5. I'm going to paste it into contact. And I'm going to use the mouse to play the notes by clicking on the keys on the keyboard. So the further uh, up towards the back of the keyboard I played the lower the velocity the further forward the higher the velocity so if I play now so the meter goes up and if I release it should come back down and it's not working let me see what's going on here oh I know what's going on there okay this bit where we're doing uh, where we're checking if any keys are held down I've put not minus one that should actually be equals minus one so um, I had that the wrong way around. Let's try again. Hopefully it'll work this time. And now if I release, it goes down slowly over time. Now I'm going to play it with the keyboard now and I'm going to hold down two keys. You should see them depress on the keyboard here. And now I'm going to release the E and our meter still stays at its position because we have another key held down and as soon as I release this key the meter goes down. So that's working exactly as we want. The only thing we've got left to do is actually there's two things left to do. The first thing is to apply an image to it and the second thing is because this is a slider we can actually just grab it and slide it around and if I bring up that instrument I had loaded a moment ago you can see that this meter, I can click on it and I can drag, but nothing happens. It doesn't act like a normal clickable slider. And the reason for that is I've placed an invisible button over the top of it so that people can't click on it. And that's what we've got to do in our instrument as well. So we'll do those two things now. First of all, we'll apply an image. So we're gonna need a bit more room in our GUI, so we'll make it a bit bigger. We'll set the UI to about 250 that should do and then we need to set the image so I'm going to open that folder up and we can have a look what we've got in the pictures folder so we've got one image called VU meter and this is the actual slider image we're going to use and if you don't want to make one of these yourself uh, you can go to the Knobman website and he's got a gallery there with some pre-made ones I'll post this link in the description on YouTube, but you can see there's a, a few here and there's lots of other um, pre-made knobs and sliders and buttons on this website that you can borrow from. So this is our VU meter animation and this is the accompanying text file. So we've got 60 frames of animation uh, for this VU meter. We've got a blank PNG image, so that's just with a 100% alpha channel set to um, full transparency. This is the same sort of thing we looked at when we were looking at how to lock scripts. In fact, this is the exact same image. And the, um, the text file for that is the same as it was in that previous video. So we're going to place the VU meter on our slider, and then we're going to place an invisible button over that slider using this image to make it invisible. Okay, so let's assign our image. Once again, I'm going to use the shorthand. Okay, so let's try that out. I'm going to hit F5, paste it in. There we go. So 
so that works nicely. Let's see what happens if we increase that uh, time a bit on the weight statement. I'm just going to do it in here rather than in Sublime Text because I'm just experimenting. Let's try it at 5000. So the needle goes down more slowly. And if you play a lot of notes it goes a bit glitchy because it's doing a delay for each um, each release but it, I mean it's still acceptable and then the final release comes down like that. Okay now let's place a button over that VU meter so that people can't click on it because currently what we can do is grab it and actually move it with the mouse like that. So we want to disable that and actually we'll create a switch because we don't want them to be able to right click and automate the button. We don't want anything to appear when they right click so we'll use a switch instead of, instead of a button. The effect for us though will be pretty much the same. We'll call it um, Vellock. That's a good name for it I think. And then we're going to need to make it quite large. We're going to need to make it the same dimensions or bigger than the slider. So let's have a look how big our image is. And um, so if we make it 150 by 80, that should cover us nicely. Okay, let's see what that looks like. We're going to have to change the position of the control as well, probably. There we go. So we need to move it forward. Uh, that might be a bit big. It depends on what you've got on your interface because um, this is going to cover more stuff. But I like to make it larger than the actual image. So we need to move that forward and down. So we'll do that. I'm just guessing these numbers. We can uh, refine it afterwards. So I've gone a bit too far there, so let's just try it in here. Let's change that to 80. Go back a bit further. Third time lucky. Yeah, well 65, that'll do. And uh, we don't need to be that far down, so let's try 15. I'll even go 10. Okay, so that covers the control nicely, so nobody can click on our VU slider. And if I right click on here, we should... Uh, oh, that's wrong. Oh, maybe it's a button I wanted, not a switch. I often get those two mixed up. Let's try changing that to a button. And that should get rid of that automation thing. So yeah, I can right click on that now and uh, no automation message pops up probably still get it, uh, in fact we will get it if we click on the slider because the slider can be automated. Uh, when the button's over that, that may solve that problem, we'll have to see. Okay, so those values I worked out were 65 and 10. And then we just need to apply the image to it, so it's the same thing as before. Picture equals lock and just for clarity, I'm going to change this from SWY because we've changed it to a, a button now. I'm going to change these to BTN to show that that's a button. I'm going to hit F5, load it into contact. And we can still see the text there. We'll have to remove that. But that stops us being able to click the slider. And if I right click, uh, the automation still comes up. So we'll disable automation on the slider. And we'll also clear the text out on that, on that button. Okay, let's have a look at that. So the text is gone. We can right click on it. We can left click on it. And nothing happens. And I can play keys. And our VU meter works. Alright guys, hope you found this useful. If you want to use a different image like an LED bank, then you just have to um, You'll have to change the dimensions of your button uh, to match whatever uh, meter image you're using. I'll bring up the code once more so you can have another look at it. 
and I hope you've found this useful. If you want to know more about contact scripting, I have my tutorial series available at extantaudio.com where we cover everything from the basics to the advanced stuff. So I hope you found that um, helpful and you can use it in your instruments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.